you are in the cash card bin this a couple hundred orders I mean this is the first crate that's actually like heavy all right Daryl in Columbia South Carolina your cash cards are on the way Knoxville Tennessee Baldwin New York Bristow Iowa Crystal in Port St. Lucie. Let's get it. Canada. Louisville, Kentucky. San Diego, California. Rowlett, Texas. Peoria, Illinois. Cypress, Texas. What's up, Cypress? People probably think I'm weird in Wisconsin recording myself. Valley, Nebraska. I didn't even know people lived there. Port Orchard, Washington. Let's get it. Brighton, Michigan. Henderson, Nevada. Pine Knoll Shores, North Carolina. Go ahead and take your shirt off. Going to Troutdale, Oregon, Fort Collins, Colorado. YouTube, what's up? It's Jordan Stupar. You're probably wondering where on earth I've actually been, but the truth is, is I've been inundated selling cash cards, flash cards for closers. Now you might be wondering what a cash card actually is. Cash cards are legitimately flash cards for salespeople and I've been selling thousands of them. I'm not lying. I started with 30 decks. I figured I'd probably have to give them away. And really the idea was that I would give these away to businesses that I actually wanted to do business with as a foot in the door type of product so that I could obviously call somebody, follow up on a piece of value. I ended up buying 30 of these. And I ended up actually putting them on Facebook and I ended up selling all 30 decks in 10 hours. So I was like, okay, I should probably maybe order some more. So I ordered 50 more. And then I sold those out in 24 hours. And then I ordered 100 and I sold all those in like three days. And then I ordered 200 and sold all of those. And you guys get the picture. I now have 52 or 53 orders that I have to fulfill right now. And my idea of a good time is telling you guys what on earth these are and why you should consider grabbing a deck that helps you stack a check. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, I mean, this one's going out to Lexington, South Carolina, out to Envision Home Solutions. Really appreciate your business, guys. Got your deck of cash cards headed your way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's me selling more cash cards while selling cash cards. To be completely honest, I do believe that I've created a monster. One of those unicorn products. And uh, by the way, don't be thinking about copying this. This is already pending trademark and copyright. So what I'm trying to say is when I was a youngster and my parents had me in school so that I could learn and become you know, a decent human being, somebody that can get a job and be valuable to society, I didn't think that I was the smartest person. I was diagnosed with some version of ADHD and whether or not you believe that to be real or not, I probably had it. I probably still have it. With that being said, I needed lots of extra tutoring and some help throughout school, especially when it came to math. And obviously, hooked on phonics found its way into my home and I was using flashcards all the time to learn two plus two, four times four, six times six, so on and so forth so that I could memorize them and I could do well in school. And unfortunately, they didn't have how to handle objections in Hooked on Phonics. So I decided, you know, with the thousands of hours that I do with consulting, working with businesses, role playing with salespeople, it seems to me that the number one thing that everybody has their attention on is handling objections. Now, the problem with that is that I do lots of training. I have lots of responses and word tracks that I've used to sell tens of millions of dollars worth of products and services to all sorts of businesses, door to door, over the phone, screen share, Fortune 50 companies like Sprint, so on and so forth. And so what I decided to do was make a deck of flashcards that help handle objections. And I'll explain. This right here is a deck of cash cards, flash cards for closers. And basically, there's about 30 or so different objections in here from I'm not interested to your price is higher than theirs to now's not a good time to I don't want to pay upfront fees to it's too expensive and we're going to wait until, by the way, that's a number two right there. That means that there's multiple word tracks and variations for the same objection. I need to talk to my spouse. I'm just looking around. We're gonna wait until that's out of our budget. I don't like long contracts. Ever heard that one before? Is that really your best price? I'm too busy, bro. I can't afford this right now. The monthly price is too high. 
By the way, that's different than that's out of our budget. I'm not interested. Have you ever heard that one before? I need to think about it. Number two. We're happy with what we already have. I know you've heard that a million times. I need to think about it. Oh my gosh, people struggle with this one. I don't like long contracts. That's out of our budget. Just shoot me an email. Click. I need to talk to my spouse, the mouse, my kitchen sink, my brother-in-law, whatever. Third party objection. I'm too busy. I'm not interested. Number three. I've used your company in the past and it wasn't very good. Now that you know what's on the front of the cards, it's important to cover what's on the back. All these cards follow my ART plus question mark objection handling formula, which of course I can talk more about or you can just click the link above and that's gonna take you to that video. But basically, these are all gonna follow the same exact formula so that you can more or less copy and paste this into your sales process so that you don't have to get tongue tied handling objections ever again. I need to think about it. And on the back side, I'm gonna give you the response of I completely understand. I don't like making decisions without thinking about anything either. So great idea, you should think about it. But tell me, on a scale from one to 10, 10 being you're ready to do business right now and a one being you wouldn't do this if it was free, well, where do you stand right now? And then you'll see that I have that word track right there and then I have a pro tip because when the customer says a six or a seven or a four or whatever, you're ultimately gonna ask them, what would make it a 10 right now? And your customer more or less is going to give you a different objection. They might say, in order to make it a 10, well, I have to talk to my spouse. Or in order to make it a 10, you'd have to actually get a lower price than the quote I got somewhere else. Or in order to make it a 10, I would have to fit this into my budget. So on and so forth, you get the idea. And so the pro tip here is gonna let you know that you should probably be aware of the fact that in order to make it a 10, your customer's probably gonna give you one of several different objections. Now, your customer, when you're in a sales process, they're going through a Rolodex inside their head of things that they've said to people for years to stall salespeople like you out, again, for years. And what most salespeople do when they hear objections is they give up or they don't have the right response. And instead of saying things like, well, what do you need to think about? Boom, I have the response here for you that can help get you out of that situation, give you a little bit of confidence that you can actually transfer to your customer and of course, you know, I've sold thousands of these and I keep on getting five star reviews like that one and that one and that one and that one and all of these. And what I'm trying to say is you should probably consider grabbing a deck of cash cards, flash cards for closers, not only for yourself, but you could grab several for your team because check this out. In my years of consulting and sales training, sales teams suck at role playing. One, because Nobody likes making you know, mistakes. They don't wanna mess up, especially in front of somebody else. So they usually don't do that. And then on top of it, there's no real uniform or singular approach to saying, this is the right way to handle the objection and that's not. So if you screw up, you gotta do it this way. And most sales teams drop the ball and skill development is something that never actually gets done. Instead, sales managers take their people to sales training and seminars. They don't really develop any skill. They don't really take any notes and they end up forgetting everything it is that they actually learned in real time. So cash cards are an amazing product because they solve so many different problems. They're simple and I mean, let's be honest, the word cash cards, I killed the name. We all know that to be true. So that's what I've been doing. And like I mentioned, I've been selling thousands of these. I cannot keep them in stock. I just got a new shipment of 400 decks right now. And these will be gone. I mean, 52 of these are already spoken for and it is Monday afternoon. So that's what I've been up to. Pretty cool, right? I think it's pretty cool. Now, what's really cool about the cash cards is when you get your deck, you're gonna get a little thing that says thank you and yeah, it's kind of cool. I obviously am really excited that people are picking up the cash cards, but most importantly, on the back side, I have a QR code that's gonna lead you to a quick little video on how to use the cash cards most effectively. And I've got a secret surprise for you guys, which I mean, really at the end of the day, it's a free training on how to handle objections, regardless of what industry you're in, regardless if you do real estate, software sales, enterprise sales, door-to-door -door sales, pest control, it doesn't really matter. At the end of the at the end of the day, human beings purchase products. No one else does. And if you're selling to human beings, then you should probably get better at communicating with human beings and learn how to handle simple objections. And by the way, 
Some customers are gonna give you multiple objections. Are you really prepared to handle all of them? Now you may be thinking to yourself, Jordan, this is a brilliant idea and you're a genius. In which case I would say thank you and you're right, I am. At least my mom says so. And basically, you're probably thinking to yourself, Jordan, is this gonna be suitable for me and my business? I sell software, is this gonna work? Yeah, it's gonna work. If you're thinking to yourself, Jordan, I work door to door, can this work for me? Yeah, it's gonna work for you. How do I know this? I know this because objections are objections. And really at the end of the day, it pays to be able to know what to say. And that is the single biggest problem I see with salespeople all over in every industry is they don't know what to say. They lack confidence, they lack certainty. They're not entirely sure how to handle objections. And so stop watching videos, stop listening to YouTube. You gotta start being able to drill and role play either with your team or, you know, with yourself. Light speed construction, Woodfin, North Carolina. Got your cash cards headed your way. Thank you for your business, I appreciate it. Hopefully we can work for a long time together and we can make each other a bunch of money. Because that's what I'm here to do. With that being said, I just wanted to update you guys on this. It's super exciting and quite frankly, if there's any lesson to be taught here, it would be that you need to go from idea to product as fast as humanly possible. It doesn't make sense to worry about all the details on how you're gonna ship them and blah, blah, blah. I bought that cool little printer over there. I got all this stuff. And these are all after the fact. What I needed to do first is just create the product. And I wanna encourage you guys, whether you're starting a business, whether you're making a product, whether you're doing anything, is worry about the details later. You need to go from idea to product or idea to execution as fast as possible. Stop waiting, stop thinking about all the details. How am I gonna ship these out? By the way, like how do I print labels and you know stuff and where am I gonna manufacture these? Those things will work themselves out. Figuring out postcards and how to print these or make them or ship them or whatever, all these extra little details, the things that you guys want to do right the first time are gonna end up happening after you make the product and send it out in an envelope. And then you realize that the envelopes aren't gonna actually work. So you need to upgrade to bubble mailers. And then you're thinking, well, how can I get the cheapest ones? Well, you're gonna make that mistake by spending too much money a couple of times when you buy little bubble packaged things and you know, you're gonna have to get a scale to weigh stuff and you'll figure all this stuff out later. What I'm saying is while you're sitting around thinking about the details and wondering how you're gonna get shrink wrap on things and how you're gonna create stuff and how your business model's gonna be and what your profit margins are gonna be, so on and so forth, you should probably just make your product, build your business, make the company, file the LLC, do what you need to do, you know? I didn't think that I'd have to get copyrights and trademarks, but guess what? Those are already filed because this product is selling tens of thousands of dollars a month and in order to really scale, I need to protect my business. That's not something that I thought about right off the bat. So stop thinking, start doing. That would be my message to you. And by the way, grab a deck, stack a check, cash cards, they're amazing. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.